Welcome back, everybody, to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just broke down a little bit of hockey. In our third, in our second segment, we broke down. Excuse me. We broke down the NBA action, uh, all the huge news coming out, and the changing of the guard that's happening there. And in our first segment, we talked about Luis Arias and the huge trade that took place between the Padres and the Marlins over the uh, weekend. In this segment here, we are going to take a look at the NHL bracket. We did NBA round two predictions on Friday. Here we are going to do NHL round two predictions. I'm going to give you everything you need to know about these matchups coming up in the second round. And we're going to start off with the series, but before we do, excuse me, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message will pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you have a burning question about sports, anything you would like me to talk about, all you need to do is leave a donation. You can control what we talk about here on the show. Again, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net, leave that tip or donation. We appreciate all of you taking time out of your day to watch, leave a comment, and uh, enjoy talking sports with all of you. But like I was saying, we are going to break down everything in the second round of the NHL draft. Uh, Not draft. (laughs) The second round of the NHL playoffs, the conference semifinals. Uh, There are four series, much like the NBA, the exact same format. We're going to start off with the series that's already kicked off. The New York Rangers, the President's Trophy Cup winning New York Rangers, taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. The Carolina Hurricanes, uh, who gentlemen swept the New York Islanders 4-1 to in the first series, and the New York Rangers, who swept the Washington Capitals in round one of their series. Uh, they, take, they, they take on each other in that first game, and the Rangers win pretty easily. The first period for the Rangers was just dominant. They had three goals on seven shots. They win this game uh, five to three on an empty net goal at the end of the game. Uh, and the Carolina Hurricanes battled back. You know, they were down 3 1 in the first. Uh, they battled back all the way. They score one goal late to, to bring it back within one, and it just isn't enough. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes are a very good team. The Rangers came out forcefully. You know, they came out physically, and they got a lot of shots past uh, Frederick Anderson. Now, he settled down through the rest of the game, and I think he just wasn't quite ready for the beginning of that game. And I think the the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be able to come back. The issues that had been plaguing the Rangers didn't stop. They gave up a lot of power plays. And against a team like the the, 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 the Hurricanes... That's, a, that's not going to fly. And But on the same end, Carolina also committed a lot of penalties, and that's also not going to slide, uh, which is the main reason they lost this game. Uh, if whoever, Whichever team can stay the most disciplined, I believe, will win this series. I have it going seven. I'm taking Carolina in this one. Uh, I just I trust their defense and their offense more. Goaltending goes to uh, Shesterkin and the New York Rangers. And at the end of the day, that really can be a series decider. But I think that this Carolina team is just better. Uh, and it's, it's going to be tight. It's going to be a really fun series to watch. In, the ho- in hockey, all, all eight of these teams remaining have genuine aspirations to win the Cup. Staying in the East, we can talk about Florida and Boston. We just talked about Boston uh, and how they, they broke Toronto's heart yet again. Yet again, they break Toronto's heart. And yet, heading into... Heading into game uh, one against the Florida Panthers, their center depth is going to be an issue. Their goaltending is incredible. Jeremy Swayman and Linus Olmark. We just talked about Jeremy Swayman's incredible game seven performance. Linus Olmark is nothing to scoff at. They're going 1-1-1-1, switching off every single round, which is something that really we haven't seen ever in the history of the postseason. It's really interesting to see how this works out. They've had this these two this true tandem for the last couple seasons, and uh, they decided to go with the hot hand last year, and it just did not work out. 
Uh, not sure why they were they were the best record ever in the history of hockey, and they lost in the first round to the same Florida Panthers. Uh, the Florida Panthers, relatively similar squad. Uh, Boston lost a couple key contributors. Florida's probably going to end up taking this. I wouldn't be shocked if Boston took this matchup, though. At the end of the day, uh, Boston is a very experienced roster. They have David Pasternak. They have Brad Marchand. They have uh, a really good defensive core. They have the, a great goalie tandem. Like I was saying in that other matchup, if you want to be, if you want to be right in hockey, like seventy-five percent of the time without knowing anything, go with the best goalie. About seventy-five percent of the time, the best goalie is going to win that series. Now, it's not a foolproof solution, so I don't want you going out and claiming you're a hockey expert because you can see the best goalie. But goalies are fun to watch, man. And at the end of the day, it's a game about scoring goals. And if your goalie is a brick wall that day, it doesn't matter. They could shoot 100 times at you. If he makes 100 saves, you're going to win that game if you just get one. That's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. Uh, <clears throat> and both of these guys have great goaltending. Sergei Bobrovsky has hit another gear in the playoffs yet again. Uh, he does have some, some lapses every once in a while. But he's been elite in that first round against Tampa. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think Florida's going to take this series because Boston just doesn't have that, that depth that Florida does. And again, all of these series are going to be good. I have Florida taking this series in six games against Boston, uh, setting up a fun Eastern Conference matchup against Carolina. Heading over to the West, you have the... Vancouver Canucks taking on the Edmonton Oilers in a series that could be better than it is. Uh, the issue for this series, and again, I'm going to straight back to goaltending, at least for Vancouver. Vancouver has a elite goalie in uh, Demko, and he got hurt. Their backup, DeSmith, got hurt. Now they are on Silvos, who is a second-year guy out of Latvia, who pitched a shutout in his in the last game, Game 6. But that was against the Predators, a team that doesn't really have an elite scoring option or an, a young elite scoring option. Now he takes his talents against one of the most talented hockey players of all time. Maybe, uh, you know, if he keeps this pace up, you might be able to put him in conversations against Wayne Gretzky to be the greatest hockey player of all time and Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Evander Kane, Zach Hyman, that offense for the Edmonton Oilers is stacked. It's what's gotten them this far. Their goalie play is okay. Their defense is okay. Both of those can be bad, but you know what isn't? Their offense is elite. They are going to score goals 100%. You can count on it. They are going to put up points. They are going to score goals. And there is nothing you can do to stop that. You could literally have a brick wall. They're going to score a goal. They'll find a way. They're that talented on offense. On the other, on the other side of things, Vancouver, a really well-balanced team. And in a series where they're completely healthy, where they have, Dem, where they have Demko, I think they win this series. We've seen it earlier this season. These two have matched up. Dem Demko was able to shut him down. It wasn't easy, but he was able to do it. He was able to steal some games. They don't have him, and he's not going to be back for game one. Silvos is going to have his, his, uh, his, his hands full in this one, and I'm not sure if he's going to be enough. Now, this is not to say anything against Vancouver because they have an offense that's capable of keeping up with Edmonton. Their defense, as they demonstrated in that last series against Nashville, the Predators, they've shown that they have the ability to be an elite defensive unit in front of their goalie. You know, it wasn't all Silvos that uh, that pitched that shutout. We talked about how low shooting it, it was. There's been so many blocked shots. They've been really good at getting in front of shots, stopping the defense. They've been really good at defense. Both of those both of those teams were elite at defense, the Predators and the Canucks, and it came out in a really interesting battle. And now they've got to flip their switch. They're going, uh, they're going from one of the better defensive teams in the league to one of the better offensive teams in the league. It's like a complete 180 if you're Vancouver, and you need to be able to be ready for that. I think it's going to catch them off guard early, 
And I think that's going to really make them struggle a little bit in the beginning of this series. And I think really at the end of the day, the goal te- the, the lack of having your starting goalie is what's going to lead to the end for Vancouver. And it's, it's a shame because Vancouver, this was their year. If, uh, Demko could st- if Demko can come back in this series, I think they win it. If he can come back game two, or if he can come back game three or earlier, I think they can win this series because I think he's going to be able to win this series for them because Edmonton's defense and goalie is bad. And Vancouver is going to be able to take advantage of that. But the elite offensive talent on Edmonton is going to be able to push them past this round if they don't have great goaltending on the other end. And that's what happened to the Kings. The Kings did not have good enough goaltending. They couldn't stay. They couldn't keep pace with Edmonton. And it's going to be a, it's going to be very similar if uh, Vancouver doesn't get elite goaltending. So I have Edmonton taking this series. Again, if, Dembo, if Demko comes back, I will go full 180. I have Vancouver taking it. But for now, uh, with Silvos, and he's been playing great, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be enough. And the final game of the, the final series between the Dallas Stars, who just played a brutal seven-game series against the defending champions, Vegas Golden Knights, and the Colorado Avalanche, who... I can give you a very similar breakdown to what just happened in that last Western Conference series. Colorado is an elite offensive team. You have the probable MVP in Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr defensively, uh, Val Nichuskin, who's really underrated. He's been a huge, huge part of their playoff runs, uh, injury prone, but he's there, and when he's on the ice, he's going to get points. On the other end, you have an elite goalie. I mean, and, and and sorry, going back to Colorado real quick, their goalie is not elite. He's below average in almost every stat. Their defense is elite, though, so it make it props him up a little bit. Uh, going to Dallas, though, like I said, they're one of the deepest teams I have ever seen. They go four lines deep. Wyatt Johnson has been a huge stepping up for them. You know, uh, Rupe Hints and uh, all the, all, they have a young core and an old core that are both there and are both playing really good hockey. And they have an elite goaltender in uh, Jake Ottinger. It's going to be a very interesting series because at the end of the day, much like the last series that uh, Colorado played, it's going to be, can Nathan McKinnon and his friends be better than this elite goalie? And the last series, the answer was a resounding yes. They dominated. And it wasn't even that bad of a series from Connor Hollebuck. It was just their offense was so much better. They were getting to all their spots. The defense for uh, Winnipeg did not do its job. It's going to be a fun series. I have, uh, I don't even think I gave my predictions for those last three. I'll run through it real quick. Uh, Florida in six uh, and Edmonton in seven or Edmonton in six I'll give it Edmonton in six uh this series I think this will go seven and as I've been harping on all all segment long goaltending 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 Jake Ottinger is going to steal this series I have the stars taking this in seven games it's going to be brutal it's going to be a brutal stretch for the stars they've played a lot of hockey and they don't get that much of a break. Every A lot of all these other teams got a nice little break, a nice little stretch, and sometimes that plays well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I have the Stars taking this in seven games. I believe in Jake Ottinger's ability to, to make some elite saves, stop, stop the uh, incredible offense that is Colorado. But anyway, if you enjoyed today's show, uh, remember to leave a like, subscribe, go check out all the other shows on the this-